today's interview we will focus on food contact regulations. When the cat is away, the mice will not only play, they will also share knowledge on food contact issues like migration, shelf life and recycling. Mice are probably better experts in food contact than we are, especially the mice behind me. Looking at the mouse trap, they seem to wonder if this material is safe to be in contact with their cheese. Also two experts in our studio today, Julie Goof from Eastman and Uli Wichorka from WT Consulting. Welcome, Julie and Uli. Can you come up with a good example that triggered the need for good food contact safety regulations in your region? Yes, I have one example. Um, China had an outbreak of melamine. You may know that it happened 10 years ago. At that time, about uh, 30 million infants had been impacted because of drinking of the milks containing melamine. So this event directly pushed the development and amendment uh, of this regulation. So the finally, when we see the amendment, the amendment will be focused on the um, responsibility of the food producer and the, the liability of the government agencies for the supervision. So from that tone now, you see that China step by step and take 10 years to set up the existing system. Now we can see. Okay, and Uli, do you have a good example? We have seen in Europe over the last couple of years, we had the benzophenone issue, we had the ITX issue, we had the batch issue, typically coming from coatings or actually printed food contact materials, which caused a lot of problems where you suddenly found uh, material in the food, which actually did not originate from the inner side of a food contact material, but from the outer side of food contact material. Good food contact regulation, also execution that works at the end of the day is very important because I think the companies, they do a pretty lot in getting their stuff regulated and looking that it's safe in the end for the consumer. But uh, those companies who make the raw materials, the monomers, the additives, name them all, they may not necessarily know what are the final use application. Okay, and Julie, what is at the moment the most advanced regulation in Asia? That the one type they actually don't have set up their own system, they just uh, looking at Europe and their uh, how US, those big entities, they are, how they are managing their food contact. So this is the very uh, typical example is Australia. So then another kind of, another type is actually, uh, uh, they have their system, but they don't have very uh, positive uh, list, but they refer to the EA, EU and uh, United States. All the evaluations have been conducted in their two countries actually has been, can be accepted. So the third type is like a typical example is China and uh, Japan. You're setting up the uh, positive list and trying to set up an uh, over, over, overall system covering from the very beginning from the raw material to the end users. And this system is the, actually the, the current, the latest one. So when we see whether it is good or not, we may look at more the suitability. And Uli, in uh, Europe, the Americas, any good recipes for food contact regulation? Well, I think uh, Europe and the US, they were basically the front runners, uh, the guinea pigs in setting up regulations. So uh, it really started with regulating additives uh, by percentage in a polymer. Then this was the classic traditional thing until I would say the early 90s. Then the EU Commission came up with the PIM regulation and they introduced a specific migration limit which finally meant you can use everything in any application as long as you meet your specific migration limit. Uh, nowadays we know that this is a real analytical challenge in execution, in control. Hey, food packaging, eh, that can be a source of chemical contamination of food. Can you provide some examples of this? Yeah, um, there is one example is aromatic um, polyurethane adhesives. You use a lot in the food contact packaging materials. And then, then there is uh, some impurity, actually we call the PAA, primary aromatic amines. And this one, if you don't control the residue and impurity level, it, when it raises high, it really can bring very bad and uh, harmful risks to the human bodies. Okay, you also have an example? The sum of all the examples which we will see in future is called not the so-called non-intended, uh, intentionally added substances, the niacin, and they become more and more popular, and uh, they are being found more and more over the, the years now because simply the analytical techniques. 
part of the future of food contact regulations will be the assessment of niacin. Okay, hey, recycling of food contact material, uh, packaging material, that's another challenge. Uh, what kind of solutions do you see? And so far when we see the recycle, actually the process has been uh, very clearly defined to ensure that everything will be ensured to, to ensure that every process can reach a very good uh, final uh, safety evaluation result to make the recycled materials uh, safely back to use. But as I just mentioned, uh, no matter from the technical side or from the regulation side, we still have a long way to go. Okay. Uli, are there different regional views in, uh, on recycling? As already said, I mean, the trigger is really to get the right, let's say, technical application. And the real challenge is the mix of plastics, the separation. When you have a version plastic, I think recycling is not that of a big issue. But I think economically we are still far away from, uh, from a situation where it makes, let's say, profitable for industry and uh, uh, easy to go solution the recycling issue. Would it be good to aim for a global harmonized food contact regulation or are the regional differences too big? So from that point, uh, the regulation harmonized may be a little bit uh, difficult because countries also need to look at their real situation to see how it is this existing system can be, can be amended. But another thing what I can see that is maybe more practical is the evaluation methodology are all over the world. This could be uh, harmonized. And this is really uh, good if um, every, I mean, globally they can, uh, a lot of problems can be identified, a lot of problems can be solved and corrected. So, global harmonized food contact regulation in all kinds of flavors? Uh, I think uh, a food contact substance is a food contact substance. Chemically wise, it's the same in Europe, US, in China, Japan. So this substance has a certain toxicological profile. Uh, this triggers the tox. On the other hand, we have the exposure coming from food packaging material. Uh, and I think this is where it gets difficult when it comes to global uh, harmonized regulations because there are really local differences in, in behavior, in food packaging, in, in, in treating food, cooking food. Julie and Uli, thank you very much for sharing your experiences on food contact regulations. It provided a lot of food for thought and things to digest. Food contact regulations around the world are in development. Some are already ripe, some need to mature like good cheese. The key message is that industry must put a lot of effort in staying up to date with all these food contact regulations. And if you're not able to make this effort, there is a huge risk of non-compliance. In other words, the only free cheese is in the mouth.